Python is the Swiss army knife of programming languages, especially when it comes to working with data. There's an incredible amount of packages and libraries written for working, interacting, and visualizing data. But what good is it to have all these packages if you can't access the data? I have a few other videos where I've gone over different file formats that you might want to store data, and there are many situations where that's exactly how you want to keep your data. But the truth is, if you work for any organization, they're probably going to have data stored in a relational database. Relational databases are great because they're a centralized location where the data is efficiently stored, and then any user can write an SQL query against that database and pull down just the information that they're interested in. So in this video, I'm going to go through everything you need to know about how to interact with relational databases using Python. If you enjoy this video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. All right, let's go. So before we get started, I do want to just point out that there are a lot of different relational databases to choose from. And most of the time, you're just going to be using whatever your organization already uses. Most of what we're going to go over here will be the same for each of those databases, but we're gonna use MySQL as a good example database. Now I'm gonna use a Docker image of a MySQL database in order to show these examples. And Docker can be really helpful in these situations because you might not wanna set up the entire database, but you wanna test out how to interact with it with Python. Well, there are already a lot of Docker images out there, which allow you, if you have Docker installed on your computer, to basically spin them up as if they're already set up on your computer. And I'm actually gonna be using this example database that's provided by MySQL in a Docker image. This is a fake database created by MySQL for testing things out and has a bunch of information about fake employees at a company. This is the shell script I'm going to run on my local computer, which will start a MySQL database and will expose that on port 3306. Most of these databases have a specific port number that they'll use for you to connect to. And we'll see more about how that's important when we run our connection string. Now that I've run that script, I can just look in Docker PS and see that this database is actually running. So maybe we want to take a look at this database without even using Python, and that might be a good first step. There are a bunch of different database management softwares out there, but I like dBeaver. It's a free open source tool that works on most platforms, and it lets you connect to most types of databases. So in dBeaver, I set up my connection to this database by providing it the URL where the host is, and I know it was exposing port 3306, the database name, and this is running on my local host, and then I also provided my username and password, which I have set up in my Docker image. Now, if you're working at a company with a database, the database administrator would give you all this information in order to know how to connect to it. But now that we're into this, you can see that I can open up this database tables. We can see the database is called employees. It even lets us see this nifty ER diagram where we can see each of the tables in the database and how they interact with each other. Also in this software, we can click on the database table, create a new script, and in here we can write some SQL to query the tables. So let's write an SQL query where we take these employees and we're gonna join this on the salaries table and we'll join on employee numbers. Let's also use a where the higher date is greater than 1999. And let's say we wanted to do some analysis on this in Python. One of the ways we can get it into Python is by exporting it from this software to something like a CSV file and then reading that in with Python. So I'll just go to export CSV and now I can see I have here the CSV file with my output. And finally, we're getting to Python code. So I have here a JupyterLab instance with Python running, and we're gonna read this in using pandas. So import pandas as PD, and then we're gonna read this CSV, which has a really long name. We can see that we have the same results from our query that we ran earlier. All right, so that does work, but it's not the ideal way to pull data from the database because it involves this intermediate step where we're using either an SQL query directly on the database and save off as a CSV. And what we'd really like 
is to access the database directly from Python. Now this is where it might depend a little bit on the database type that you're connecting to, but here we're connecting to a MySQL database and we can use the MySQL. This will allow us to connect directly to that MySQL database. Now most of these connections work in a very similar way. So you, first thing you need to do is create the connection using the MySQL connector. And we're gonna connect and we need to provide some information to this connection in order to create this connection string. First one's gonna be our username, which we're just using root. We set up the password to be college when this was set up. The host is just gonna be our local host. The database name was employees. And we're also gonna disable SSL for this example. Now we have this database connector and we can use this to create a cursor. Now when we establish this cursor, we can then start pulling down data using our SQL query. But we wanna make sure whenever we're done with this, it's in your code, you wanna always make sure that you close the connection and the cursor so that it's no longer reserved on the database. But we haven't run our query yet, so let's go ahead and take our cursor and let's run this exact same query. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually create a query object that is a string that will contain our SQL query. Let's go ahead and grab the same query that we used before and paste it in here. Now we can take this cursor and we can execute this query. Now you can think of our cursor as being pointed at the results from this query, but the cursor will only give us the results one row at a time. And in order to retrieve this data, we need to iterate over the cursor and pull out and extract our data. So I'm gonna enumerate over the cursor and I'm just gonna break out of that out after the first run to show you that we do indeed have our first result from this query. Okay, so let's put this all together. We have a connector that we've created, we've created the cursor, then we could take our results after we run our query on this cursor and we can append them with the results from this data. And then we wanna make sure we take the cursor, we close that and the connection and close that. I've run this cell and we can see that it's run for all our results and we have them here. It's in a list of results. If I look at the length of the list, it has 4,853 elements. Similarly, if we go back and look at the CSV, we had 4,853. So it's the exact same amount of data. We've just pulled it in a different way. Now we could take these raw results and just wrap this in a pandas data frame. And now we have a data frame with the same data as the CSV that we pulled in. The only difference is being that we don't have column names. So to make this right, I could just rename the columns with what I know we want them to be. And there we go, we have our results. So you might be thinking this is a lot of manual things to keep track of if you wanna pull the data from the database. And it is, you have to keep track of the cursor, the connection, make sure you're closing th things. And if you wanted to do things in Python for speed, this would be the way to do it. However, our main goal is to get this data out and run some analysis on it. So we're gonna use pandas directly to read this data using our SQL query. Now pandas, just like read CSV or read parquet, has a read SQL method. And actually the read SQL method is a convenience wrapper around read SQL table, which would read an entire SQL table or read SQL query, which will run a query on the database and pull out the results. But we're just gonna use read SQL since it makes things simpler. And what it takes is this SQL statement, which we already wrote before, and it takes a connection. And the connection we are going to create using SQL Alchemy. So let's import pandas and import SQL Alchemy. And then from SQL Alchemy, we're going to import create engine. Create engine will allow us to create the database connection to this MySQL database. Now this is where it's a little bit specific for the type of database that you have, but the connection strings are usually 
pretty standard in the way they're written. So I'm gonna create a connection string, which is gonna use MySQL and PyMySQL. And this is where I provided the username and password, which is root college. And I'm accessing this on my local host. And the database is called employees. SQL Alchemy has some great documentation on these different database strings and how you might write them for each type of database. So you can reference their documentation depending on the database that you're trying to connect to. Now that we have our connection string, we can create our engine using SQL Alchemy's create engine. And there we go. Now that we have this engine, we can just use pandas directly to load in our query as a data frame. I'll just paste the same query in here. We'll use pandas read SQL. We'll provide it this query and the engine, and we'll call this df read SQL. Now that that's run, I can see that I have a data frame here that has all the different columns, and we have the same number of rows that we did when we ran with the connection and when we just exported the CSV from dBeaver. Now, most of the time, unless you're a database administrator or you're writing more advanced program, you're going to be just reading from the database, but Pandas also allows you to write the results to the database. So let's just do some quick analysis and take the result and write it to our database. Let's group by our employee number, first name and last name. Then let's take the salary for this employee and pull the max salary. We'll reset this index and we'll create a new data frame called max salary, which has the maximum salary of all of the employees that we had in our initial data set. Now we can take this data frame and use to SQL to write this to the database. Now what we provide it here will be the name of the table that we are writing to in our database. So let's just call this max salary. And then we also need to provide it the engine similar to when we ran the query. Now, if I run this, it's actually created that table into our database. If I jump back to dBeaver here, we can see the ER diagram that shows all the tables in our database. And underneath tables, we see the new max salary table that was created as a result of writing to SQL. Typically in most companies, the database is pretty important to keep correct. And you wanna make sure you're very careful when writing to the database. So there are a few things to keep in mind. The first one is if we try to run this same cell a second time, we'll actually see that it returns an error. And if we look at that error, we can see that's because it's saying that this table already exists. This is because by default to SQL with pandas is expecting that you're writing to a brand new table in the database. But there are some ways around this. If you know that you're writing to an existing table, you can go to this setting of if exists. By default, this setting is fail and it will return the error like we saw before. Or we could change it to say replace, which will replace that entire table, basically drop it and then write the new data. Or append, which will take what's in the database already and just add the data frame that you're writing onto that same table. So just to show you how this works, let's take the if exists parameter and say replace. Now let's read this back in using pandas read SQL. We'll call it max salary two read SQL. And we'll just make a simple SQL statement, select star from max salary, and we'll provide it the engine. And our max salary here should be very similar to our max salary data frame that we use to create that table. The only difference is that we have index set to true here in when we wrote out our SQL. So let's actually set index equals to false, run that, it should replace it. And now if we read it in again, now we no longer have that index column. Again, looking at the shapes of the data that we wrote and the data that we were reading back out, they're the exact same shape and they should be exact same data. And to show you as an example, if we wanted to write to the same table, but instead of replacing append, let's make a new data frame called max salary plus, And we're gonna take this max salary plus data frame and add 1 million to everyone's salary. So we can see this data frame is different than what we had before. 
and let's say to SQL, again, writing to the max salary table, we'll provide it the engine, we'll say index equals false, and then if exists, we'll say append. Now it's done writing that data to that table, but it's appended instead of overwritten that table. So now if we read in our max salary table again, using the simple select star SQL query, we can see the result of this actually has salaries in this lower range. And then the ones we added a million to, and it's twice the size of the original data frame. One example of why you might wanna do this appending to a table is for instance, if you have max salary that you compute on a daily basis, you might create a new column called create date. Then you could just pull in today's date and add that as a new column. Now, if I try to write this to the SQL table, it's not gonna work because I have this new column that wasn't there before. So first I need to replace and now I'll append it and I'll have the newer date time in this create date. So reading this one last time, we could see we have the creation date. If I run a value counts on this, we could see that created on two different times. Just for good measure, let's run it again and append. And I'll again read from the database and do a value counts on this creation date. We can see there are three unique creation dates. So I hope you learned a lot in this video about how to work with pandas and Python to interact with relational databases. There's a lot more still to learn, but this should get you off the ground and started. And if you paid attention this long, you probably noticed that my shirt has changed because I finished recording this about a week after I started recording it. I decided to make this video because I surveyed all my subscribers and they said that this was the topic they wanted to hear about. So let me know in the comments what type of video you would like to see in the future, and I'll try my best to make it. See you all next time.